John, have you watched the film? Yeah, I did. I did um, uh, a week ago. I, I just felt that maybe if he'd been more informed, he could have asked more direct questions to go into a food uh, plant-based diet. Well, where does that take us? How sustainable is that? And what, is, what would be the carbon footprint? It all sounds very good. Um, there were some of the questions about what's the difference between a, a chicken and a, and a, and a dolphin or, or, or a whale. Well, quite clearly, he didn't put the point that it's the growth. Uh, you can grow chickens fairly quick, but the, the, for a mature age of a, of a dolphin, a whale, whatever, um, he just missed a, a, a big opportunity. It was very, back to my point, emotive. It didn't really address the way forward, but to, to, to make the strong point about moving on to a, a plant-based diet, well... I don't, don't think he did himself any favours. And to conclude, uh, thank you again. Uh, I think there is an opportunity here, a lot of good points being made. We, we don't all have to agree cl clearly. Uh, I would like to see the relocation of Marine Scotland into the north where the industry is. Instead of sitting down at Victoria Quay, let's get the people out and working in the communities and see the, the good and the bad and the policies that are being introduced uh, things like the licensed parking scheme only made certain people very wealthy and it's uh, had a huge economic impact on the active fishermen, things like um, that. I haven't actually seen the, the film, so... Um, oh, well, we'll move think... on then. <laughs> OK, but on the two questions, Ed, should we all move to a plant-based diet? No, as, you know, I think it's the freedom of the individual to eat what they choose to eat. Should we go to 30%? No, catch zones. Sounds a bit like an arbitrary target to, to me. Um, and it sounds again like the sort of high level centralised decision making that has actually brought us to the point where we are today. So um, unless there's a bit more evidence behind that uh, than I've heard, then I wouldn't be persuaded. Um, in terms of the overall debate, uh, I think I would return to the theme that I have uh, touched on several times over the uh, evening, and it's the case for localism. Uh, years ago, not long before I was first elected to Parliament, I attended a fisheries conference in Peterhead um, ahead of the 2002 uh, reform of the Common Fisheries Policy. One of the uh, speakers there was Mike Park from the White Fish Producers Association. And I remember Mike saying something then that has stuck with me ever since, and it is that the further a fisherman gets from his own home port, the less he cares about sustainability. Um, now, I think it's a bit harsh, but uh, it's something that Mike, as a fisherman himself, could perhaps say. Um, but it does reinforce my view that the base management is the management that involves all the stakeholders, the, the, the industry, the scientists, the uh, the, the conservation groups, the people, the communities who are going to be most directly affected. And when I say industries, it's not just the catching sector, it will be the processors and the merchants as well. Um, and that should be taken back to the lowest possible community level. Um, and, uh, you know, look, I, I started, a, a, my, or I wanted to reference a plastic pollution, so allow me just to use your good nature here, Rob, to touch on that before I finish, because I think it's the dog that's not barked tonight. If you do um, it in 60 think, seconds. OK. Um, it requires regulation of the industry, the fact that we have far too many different sorts of plastic that are available. Um, the uh, preponderance of uh, single-use plastic is something that has increased in, in the pandemic, not uh, reduced. And uh, it actually also touches on our relationship with the developing world as well, because we export far too much of our rubbish uh, to the developing world. Uh, and that's how a lot of it ends up back in our marine ecosystem. I, I put some Ayrton's number in the chat for anybody who might be struggling with their mental health or with suicidal thoughts. Um, there was a, a, a tragic death of somebody by suicide in a fishing community in Scotland just two weeks ago. Um, it's a very precarious industry. It can be very financially insecure. Personal finance is one of the main drivers of poor mental health. Um, so please do reach out if you do need, do need support. It is there for you if you need it. Um, from Samaritans, from Breathing Space, from Sam H. Um, they can support you and you can get help. Um, in relation to the documentary, um, I think it was emotive. There is a balance to be struck, certainly. Um, and I'm not sure how, if it, if it did strike that balance, to be perfectly honest. Um, 
one thing we do not want to do is to push people into poverty. Um, and I think that any changes that are proposed, now, and I do believe drastic changes are needed, um, they have to be considered in a way that um, does not put, put people's livelihoods at stake in such a fashion that would, um, you know, push push families and individuals into poverty, and that that would have you know a huge impact for people's health outcomes, a huge impact um, on the, on the health of our nation and the well being of our nation. So um, I think there is a balance to be struck, but I do not doubt that um, drastic action is needed. I would be hypocritical if I said a plant based diet is the way to go because I don't have a plant based diet myself. Um, but I don't doubt that a move to a more plant based diet is a good thing. And I know that a lot of that was raised in, in the chat throughout this. Um, uh, and I think certainly we could all be eating less protein. Um, but yeah, it was a very emotive documentary without a doubt. Harriet, um, do you want to, did you see see Spiracy? What do you think of it? And have um, you learned anything from tonight's debate? I've not seen it, but I was hearing a lot of accounts on it on the radio, which had a lot of different opinions on it as well. Um, I think from what I gather is, as everyone else has been saying as well, it was quite one-sided sort of the agenda was set and the story was going to fit it. And yes, obviously evidence is evidence-based, but it still has to be balanced. In terms of a plant-based diet, absolutely not. That's not what we should be driving towards. Yes, it should be a balanced diet and not one wholly reliant on, on fish and meat. But then at the same time, what's the alternative? We need as humans, we are at the top of the food chain effectively, and therefore we need to make sure we can take the balanced approach that's needed. But if we were to then change our diet, if you take it from an animal point of view, if, if an animal in the ecosystem changes their diet, that has such a knock-on effect, and that can be positive or negative. And a negative way of us taking a plant-based diet is, for example, we still need space to grow food. Where does it come from? We've got the sea as, a, as an ecosystem. What happens? Oh, we can eat kelp. We'll dredge more kelp. It's everything has a knock on or, okay, we're not going to take meat or fish from the sea. What we're going to have to do, we're going to have to grow more crops on land. That leads to more monocultures, which leads to lower biodiversity or crops are being planted instead of trees, which leads to less carbon capture. So everything has a knock on effect and it's impossible to take things just completely one sided. So, so no to the plant based diet, but definitely yes to taking the health and sustainability of our seas more seriously. And I think that's something that we, everyone on this call this evening has really appreciated, but that is something that does need action and something that we should all be putting together to make sure that we get action on in the future. Our seas are really important for, for the climate, for um, biodiversity and for us, and not just for econ economics or for food. As Susan was saying, just for mental health or ecosystem services, things that aren't tangible, but are there. We need to make sure that we are replenishing the seas and keeping them and improving the condition and not letting them deteriorate for future generations. So that's pretty much my closing comments. But yeah, I think we're all on the same page and we just need to make sure that we're, we're working for our seas as much as we can. Yeah, you know, I've heard you know, various views about, about seaspiracy and, and I think, you know, it was controversial. And I think what it has done is it's got people talking about the importance of the seas and the fact that we do have a nature and climate emergency and there are major issues with our, our global fishing industry and I think you know documentary highlighted that across the world so you know it's already gone I think beyond where Blue Planet took us because for a while Blue Planet brought a right that you know a strong focus on plastics and some of the marine pollution issues this has really started to get people talking about the future of the fishing industry as well so I think it's an important starting point I think it's inevitable that we're going to have to move towards more plant-based diets um, I mean, you've got the UK Climate Change Commission, you know, saying that, you know, we're, we're going to have to see much more plant based diets if we have any chance of meeting climate targets. It doesn't mean people stop eating meat and fish, but it does mean that we're reducing the consumption, certainly in line with um, with health guidelines. And at the end of the day, you know, that that's going to cut climate emissions as, as well. So I think that's inevitability. And to be honest, that's where consumer trends are going anyway. People are generally eating less meat. I think Alistair made a good point, actually, just in closing, just about localism because I think looking at the next session of the Scottish Parliament and the need for fisheries legislation to come in and the need to start to look at how decision making happens locally the moment we've got inshore fisheries groups you know they're pretty much dominated by the industry but I think we need to bring communities into this decision making and communities 
into the discussion around where the economic benefits can be. And uh, you know, I'd like to see more relocalization of some of our of our sea fish markets as well. Yeah, we export obviously huge amounts to to Europe. Um, and at the moment, you know, if there's anything that's affecting the mental health of people working in the fishing sector, it's the the the, the, the tragic delays and, and costs that that sector is facing at the moment as a result of Brexit and, and some of the kind of heartbreaking images of just, you know, lorries just, you know, being parked up and not being able to get their, their um, you know, their, their product to market. But I think, you know, that should send a signal to us that actually there are opportunities to relocalize some of our seafood marketing as well and to relocalize some of the decision-making and start to look more at the economic benefits as well as the environmental benefits of what local management can do. So I think that's a big agenda for the next session of Scottish Parliament and the fisheries legislation that will hopefully come through. And I guess the one thing I'd say to everybody who's called tonight is listening in is hold every single one of us to account in whatever role we're in. While I do agree that it wasn't balanced, it was done as an expose and that's what it did. It exposed certain really serious issues and, and you know, not least um, the, the dreadful issues around slavery on, on fishing boats. And only one example of that that I know of that's happened in Scotland, but I, I don't know if there are others, was um, on, on the East Coast in South Scotland where um, there were Filipino people being kept on, on a boat. Now, th this, is, this is such a minority thing here I very much hope, but it is a, an international issue. And that's something that, that we should be not shying away from. I think um, two quick points about sea spiracy, um, but I, I'll, I'll say as well, that I agree with Mark's um, position on, on um, plant-based diet. So I'm not going to um, reiterate that, but I thought I was really concerned about the MSC certification issue. And that was interviews and, um, it made me not feel so good about eating, frankly, a tin of tuna with that with that um, with that MSC uh, label on it. So I had a real concern about that, and I think as politicians, we all have a responsibility to to address that. Another thing was um, the emphasis on plastic, which is a dreadful pollutant and breaks down, and we all know what all the arguments are: um, plastic in our seas, and we've seen the dreadful films of of the seas of plastic, but. Um, the issue around fishing nets. Now, I, I think, why is that not being talked about? And, and that really got me thinking, you know, I've seen fishing nets near time out when my daughter happens to stay. But, but I, I just think that it's something that we should be addressing. And it may be that there should be some form of um, recycling arrangement for fishing nets like there is for, um, for the, the, bales, the bale coverings for farming um, str for straw straw bales, you know, that is then recycled yeah. fencing. Uh, so that there were a lot of things that came up in it, which really got me thinking and made me think, right, next parliament, big challenges um, and internationally big challenges. I would just say on the mental health issue as well, Rob, that um, it is fundamental for any change that happens in our communities and, and coastal communities are often remote, often fragile and often um, there, there are many challenges that are faced beyond that of what income people can get from how they how they make their living. Um, but I think that is why a just transition, if there are changes, is so fundamentally important. So that if there's a shift from dredging and trawling um, over, over the coming years to another form of, of um, gaining fish or, or more creoling or whatever, whatever it may be, and if there's more marine tourism and less fisheries and more plant-based diet, then the people who are in the industry at the moment must be supported. And that is a Scottish yeah. Labour position. And, and it's one that I'm, I'm very passionate about. And I think, frankly, we need an, a Just Transition Commission um, a, still. And I'm, I'm disappointed that there isn't one still. And that's not just for um, onshore, but for um, land, I mean, land-based um, issues of change, but for marine issues as well. I think, I think I forgot one takeaway. I, I apologise, I haven't seen C uh, Spiracy as a programme, but I will definitely watch it given what others have said. And um, clearly from what you have said, Rob and others have commented that it's not necessarily intended to be a balanced piece, but, but to expose certain practices as Claudia was just saying. 
But to address the questions, do I believe in an entirely plant-based diet? I don't personally, but I think, as others have said, where perhaps we have to have more balance. We can all look to um, eat a bit more sensibly, um, eat uh, and reduce food waste, apart from anything else. One of the, the, the saddest aspects of Western diets is how much food actually gets wasted, that, that gets harvested and, and, and utterly wasted, so not used for nutrition at all. Um, do we have to have industrial fishing of the likes of, uh, of um, uh, sand eel, for example, which are vital for our ecosystems? Not sure that's a sensible thing to see, uh, especially when we're, we're seeing vulnerabilities in our seabird populations. So there are consequences for human actions. I do take that on board entirely. Do we have no catch areas? There, there may be an, an evidential base for, for no catch areas in some locations. In fact, that's proved, proved necessary to protect um, uh, vitally uh, uh, you know, important habitats and ecosystems. But in general, we talked about MPAs earlier. I thought one takeaway from tonight's meeting from the comments in the chat room is that people are really looking for enforcement with teeth. And, and so if we are going to have MPAs, we need to see MPAs actually policed and enforced. And I do take that on the chin. That's, that's something that's important. The system will work if we have proper enforcement of those MPAs. In terms of ending fishing subsidies, obviously there's a huge social value in the fishing communities and the fishing activity that we've touched on that earlier, so I'll not repeat it. So um, clearly we need to support that for, for reasons of the communities that are affected with, uh, with, by, by fishing. And uh, nobody wants to see a situation arise in Scotland as we saw in the likes of Cape Cod in North America with vast overfishing, total collapse of stocks and the social impact that had on those communities, a devastating impact. So it's in all our interest to get the balance right here. And that's the, the other thing I take away tonight. It's all about balance. And I know that's difficult to reach. And you're right, Rob, to the question of what is sustainable? What does that actually mean in practice? Um, but we have to try and find that way through. I would just say to John Cox's comment about Marine Scotland, just to point out that Marine Scotland Science is based in Aberdeen. And I don't know about his community, but my community has got Marine Scotland officers in Eyemouth. And they are very active and, and you know, so they are spread across Scotland. So it's not an Edinburgh based organisation. The vast majority of the staff are based around the country and doing a great job. And, um, and somebody, you're, you're finishing now, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, just just to point out, somebody highlighted the chat room, Rob, about the that, that's accusing the Scottish government of ignoring the nature emergency. We really aren't. I appreciate we could do better. Uh, right, but I recognise that climate emergency is about biodiversity loss as well as climate change. And, and, and those are two important objectives to address.